Hey, it's Dr. Hillary. I have a special guest today. This is Kristen. She is going to talk to us about emotions. So I'm super excited to hear what she's got to say. Uh, Kristen, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. So I'm Kristen. I'm actually a therapist. I primarily work with children. Um, I've been in schools. I've been in homes, um, teaching a lot of kids about their feelings, being able to manage her, their feelings, being able to identify their feelings, um, and being able to label them, not know you know, not knowing what their feelings are really has, has hurt them. Um, and so then they come to me and we are able to talk about our feelings. We do, um, we learn about coping skills, how to cope with our feelings. And then the cool thing is, is that they also go home and they talk to mom and dad about their feelings and how, you know, they be, they are able to. And so then I get to learn about the, from the parents of like, oh, my kiddo came home and taught me about how to, you know, take deep breaths when they're feeling angry and things like that. And then the parents get to learn it. Um, so it's actually, I have a pretty cool job, I gotta say. Oh, that's so fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, get us started. Tell us what we're, what kind of emotions we're going to be talking about. I mean, really, a lot of it is about just being able to identify, being able to label emotions. Um, majority, especially I've noticed with kids and even just adults is that people only really learn when they're little, they only know three emotions and that is happy, mad, and sad. And so, you know, you see the emotions, you know, kids cry and they say, I'm really sad. Um, and then they say, um, you know, they have the angry face and they're like, I'm just really mad. And then they're bouncing off the walls and they, they don't, they might not use the word excited, but they just use the word happy. Um, and those are kind of just the general, you know, feelings that we all kind of learn about. Those, those are just the ones that you hear about all the time. Um, so really I'm here to just talk about, you know, the importance of us being able to, you know, identify emotions, you know, what they each mean, um, being able to, uh, you know, label our own emotions and the importance of it. Um, and, you know, also some ways to be able to cope with some of our intense emotions. Um, so, I mean, I will start with basically the importance of it. Um, you know, we are in a time here in 2020 um, where there's a, there's a lot going on this year. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's, you know, celebrities passing away. There's, you know, friends, family passing away, you know, COVID is happening. Um, it's an election year. There's a lot going on um, in our country, in our world. And a lot of people just don't know how to be able to deal with that kind of thing. Um, it, and so it's really important that when life kind of throws us a curveball, that we're able to identify and we're able to just express our feelings, have people to be able to talk to, um, and be able to manage that effectively without having to, you know, resort to that, you know, bottle of wine at the end of the night or the work day, um, or, you know, looking forward to Friday to drink that bottle of wine, um, mm -hmm. or using any other substances or just, you know, kind of our emotions get in the way sometimes and they affect our relationships with people, whether it's our family, our friends, our coworkers, mm -hmm. um, so being able to identify them, it's really, really tough. A lot of times you can Google something. It's called the emotions wheel. And what it is is that it will have the core emotions. Um, you know, it'll be happy, mad, sad, confused, um, fearful, worried. And they're in kind of the center of the circle. And then they actually expand out. And each, each feeling word will branch out into other feeling words that are basically like synonyms of that feeling word. And then each of those feeling words will branch out into the very outer part of the circle that will branch out into even more feeling words. And it's just a little bit more descriptive. Um, wow. So it's actually a pretty cool wheel. It's, it's very interesting. So if you just Google like the emotions, you know, feel or feelings wheel or emotions wheel, you'll be able to see it. It's in, it's in like a lot of different colors. Um, 
so I always use that, especially with, you know, especially with adults, but with kids, I just kind of get those, those use those emojis, you know, the green emoji for feeling sick and like the happy emoji um, and the excited emoji, you know, something with a, a smile and like the crying emoji for being sad um, and being able to label that. So being able to say, I'm sad because, you know, my brother pinched me or you know i'm really mad because i just am struggling to be able to ride a two-wheel bike or you know for adults it's i'm really mad because my you know boss wouldn't approve my vacation time or something like that or i'm just really frustrated at at having to be quarantined all the time um, i'm frustrated so having to wear a mask all day every day <laughs> Right, right. I'm frustrated when I forget my mask because I'm still forgetting how to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> still forgetting, you know, some places want cotton masks or will accept cotton masks and then others want more of the medical mask. And so it's, you know, you have to have both. And sometimes the stores are sold out of both. And being able to express that without kind of and being able to process that, you know, sometimes internally, instead of, you know, showing that emotion to somebody and being like, oh, well, you know, this is just awful. Um, because sometimes our frustrations, you know, can kind of build up. Um, and then once they build up and become more and more and more, kind of like a volcano, I always explain it to kids, is that then we just explode. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have just one little thing that bothers you and then you know, you might have stress at work and then all of a sudden COVID hit and then, you know, you may have lost your job and then, you know, you might be going through a divorce and then the election might be bothering you. And then all of a sudden you are just one thing just tips it off mm -hmm. um, and then you're just angry all the time and you might be expressing it to other people. Um, so it's a good visual. Once, I definitely have felt a volcano once or twice in my life. <laughs> yes. Yes. Haven't we all? Right. Mm. <laughs> So, so one thing that I have done um, with kids, especially, and even just with myself, is being able to talk about that volcano and figure out where, what level are you at? A lot of times I use like superheroes for kids. And then for like adults, I'll just kind of use like a, a thermometer kind of thing. Um, and being able to label like your... Emo like not your emotions, but your level of frustration or sadness. And I usually use like a one to five scale because um, I don't want it to be too big. Um, and so like one is like, you're okay. Like you're managing it's, it's, you know, you're calm, you're content. And then when you, as you get up to a five, five is like, I'm going to explode or I have exploded. And so being able to teach people how to be able to manage that so that you don't get up to a five. That's, that's where we like to avoid it so that we don't, so that we don't explode because how awful would it be if, for example, you came in to work after your kids, you know, destroyed the house or something, made a big mess and mm -hmm. tried to, you know, your son is, is young and he tried to, you know, cook something on his own and he, and he, you know, burnt some of the kitchen or something and you came into work and you were really angry and then like a client came in and all of a sudden you were like, oh, well, I guess I have to do this today. Like, I guess I will adjust you and I'd be angry about it, you know, and then people would be hurt and upset and it would just kind of snowball, be a snowball effect. Um, so one thing that I have always taught people, it's actually a skill um, from a type of therapy called DBT, which is dialectic behavioral therapy. Um, and I, I love DBT. It's wonderful. I try to talk about it as much as I can. Um, and DBT is full of acronyms. Um, so there is a type of skill, it's called the please skill. And this one is just easy to be able to manage, you know, kind of manage those daily emotions. Um, because if we're taking care of ourselves, you know, physically, mentally, then we should be able, you know, to be a little bit more mindful, a little bit calmer. Um, because some of our chemicals in our brains are just, you know, they are functioning correctly and regularly. So for, for please, 
Um, the P is for physical illness. So being able to call the doctor, um, you know, call your chiropractor when you are in pain or when you are feeling sick, being able to take care of that physical illness if you have any concerns physically. Um, e is for eating. So balancing eating. You know, we've been in quarantine for, you know, quite a long time now. Um, and so you know, we're surrounded in our kitchens all the time with, you know, all the lovely snacks maybe the kids eat or just, you know, the snacks that we like, whether it's ice cream or cookies or even if it's just fruits and vegetables. Um, so a lot of people, you know, when we get bored because we've been in home for so long that we, you know, tend to just eat a little bit more. Um, so being able to, to balance that, making sure that, you know, you are eating three meals a day and, you know, drinking a lot of water. Um, and then also avoiding, I know some sometimes it's hard, wine is kind of a, a thing. It's kind of, you know, a go-to for, for a lot of adults, um, being able to avoid some of those like mood altering substances like, you know, alcohol or drugs or things like that. Um, so be just because they alter your moods, they can affect relationships. It's just, it's not good for your mind or your body. Mm -hmm. Um, and being able, so S is for sleep. So being able to make sure you're getting enough sleep through the day so that when you wake up, you feel refreshed, um, you're ready to go for the day. And, and E is for getting exercise, um, being able to exercise for at least 30 minutes a day, whether that's taking the dogs for a long walk, going outside with the kids, um, kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, friends, kids, whatever it is, getting at least 30 minutes of exercise a day. Um, because you're, you know, the chemicals in your brain is just good for your body. It's good for your mind. It's good for your soul. Um, so those, those are some skills that can, the please skill is really just great for maintaining just a healthy mind and body. Um, now a lot of times I, I practice, uh, mindfulness a lot. Um, and a lot of people think of, you know, like, I guess, Buddhas or something like that. And they're just kind of sitting there like, um, and you know, that's not real. That's not really what it is. Um, a lot of times I actually have an app that's called insight timer. Um, a lot of people use like calm or insight timer, or they go on YouTube and I will do like a guided meditation where it will guide me to be able to, you know, go to the ocean or be able to identify like a, a safe, a safe and the perfect place. Um, I know for me, a lot of times I, my safe place that I call it is I'm on the beach and it's, you know, white sand. There is a, you know, a bunch of palm trees behind me and there's a hammock, but I'm sitting in the sand. It's about 80 degrees. I'm by myself. There's not a cloud in the sky and I can see the waves out in front of me. And that's just, I can envision that. And I use all of my senses and I, you know, move my, my fingers and my toes and being able to imagine myself, um, like feeling the sand or being able, you know, to dip my feet in the water, um, being able, what do I smell? Like using all of those senses. What do you smell? What do you, you know, what do you hear? What do you, what do you taste? You might not even be eating anything, but sometimes when you're at the beach, you can almost taste that, that the salt. Water salt. Feel. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's the best. Um, so being able to I, you, like use those emotions and that really can just kind of calm your body. And it doesn't have to be something that's like an hour long or two hours long. You can do meditations um, that really can be about anything. Um, you can do it about mindfulness and using all of your, um, your senses to be able to like maintain calmness in your body and your mind. You can even do something, um, you know, a, two minute meditation on loving kindness, which is being able, if you're frustrated with yourself, um, being able to kind of be compassionate to yourself um, mm -hmm. is a loving kindness, um, which is really, it's actually a lot harder than, than people think to be able to love yourself. Um, and you can also do loving kindness to other people as well, um, which is usually a lot of people say it's a lot easier to do. So mm -hmm. being able to practice loving kindness, I know I do it when I drive, being from the East Coast, we drive a lot faster than everybody in Indiana. So, you know, being able to say, you know, when somebody, 
you know, cuts me off instead of, you know, cursing at them and being angry or wanting to follow them, you know, to their destination. It's a little, that's a little out of control. It's a little excessive. It's a little excessive. <laughs> yeah. But we feel that we think about it. We think <laughs> about it. And sometimes people might do it. Um, and so being able to say, you know, wherever you're going, you know, may you be, may you be happy, may you be safe. Um, and being able to kind of give them, I always, I have like a little saying in my car that when I do get frustrated, I just flip my visor and I read it. Um, and just kind of, you know, we, we don't know their situation, you know, maybe they cut us off and they're speeding off to, you know, the hospital because their wife's having a baby or, you know, there's a medical emergency or, or something we, we just don't know. And so, you know, there's not really a reason for, you know, a big reason for us. To, to be so frustrated and to be so angry. Um, so I always practice a lot, of, a lot of the mindfulness and I do it a lot before I go to bed. Um, sometimes there's just, t I know Insight Timer has a ton. There's like thousands of free meditations and they can range anywhere from like a minute or two to, you know, an hour or two. Um, so mostly I usually fall asleep to one. And so I, I don't necessarily um, even always do it. It's just something to listen to, something that's a very calm voice, something that I can definitely fall asleep to. Um, so that's definitely extremely helpful. Um, there's also, let me see, I'm trying to think. There's also just a lot, the importance of us being able to talk about our emotions we don't talk about it. This is, you know, we live in a society, we live in a world where talking about your emotions, whether it's in America or anywhere in the world, we don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have any type of emotion other than happy, you, you can't talk about it. You know, we, we look at people, um, there's just that stigma where we look at people that have depression, have anxiety, have, you know, suicidal thinking, um, we look at them and we label them as, you know, crazy or psychotic or you're nuts or something like that. And that takes away um, from people wanting to get help and people wanting to go to therapy. When, when in all honesty, therapy is just so freeing. I always say to people um, that therapy is just 60 minutes where you can go somewhere and go talk to somebody who is trained not to judge you. And as long as you're not planning to hurt yourself or anybody else, I mean, they can't tell anybody about what you're talking about. Um, so I always say that, you know, therapy is just great because you can go there and just talk to somebody for an hour and be like, you know, I don't like this person today because they're wearing a red shirt. And then it's like, <laughs> okay, well, let's talk about that. Um, and so I just find, I find therapy just very freeing. You know, as a therapist myself, a lot of us go, we, we go to therapy because we know the importance of it. Um, and a lot of, I do a lot of volunteer work um, with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And it's just crazy how, how much, you know, people just are not validated. People just feel alone. Um, and that's why, you know, I public speak on, on talking about emotions, um, being able to public speak about like my story with anxiety and depression, um, being a therapist, because there's just so many times where, pe you know, people just don't get the emotional component, whether it's when they're growing up, um, whether it's in their job. And so then they just don't feel validated and they just, it makes them, you know, more irritable, makes them more upset. Um, and everybody wants to be validated. Nobody wants to be just tolerated. Mm -hmm. I, that word just drives me nuts. Like I, I just kind of deal with you because I have to. Um, I know. Yeah. And that, that's Dad. what I think of with the word, I know. That's what I think of with the word tolerated. Um, so I always just think that, you know, people always want to be validated, like, hey, you're doing a great job or hey, like, I really, I get how you're feeling. Like, I can only imagine how that must be for you. Um, and it doesn't take a therapist to do that, you know, being able to tell our kids, um, you know, you're doing such a great job. Oh my gosh, you got an A on your paper. That's awesome. You got a B. That's awesome. You know, you made a soccer goal. That's awesome. You know, the first thing when... Um, a baby learns to crawl, you know, what's, you know, and you see them, you know, for the first time crawling across the floor, what do you do? 
Cheer, Mom. Go, go, go. Yay, she's gone. Yay. You did it. Oh, my gosh. You pick them up. You spin around. You give them lots of kisses. And then they they walk and they, you know, you're doing the same thing. You're rewarding them. You potty train them and you reward them with sticker charts and all that stuff and kisses and hugs. And then it's kind of like, then what? <laughs> you know, you go to school and you, you know, you do things that, you know, you might hang up their pictures that they draw that are really cool. Um, and then it's kind of, it kind of becomes a, well, you're just kind of there. And it's like, you are, let's celebrate your birthday. You made it to 10 and you made it to 16 <laughs> and congratulations. You got, you know, your license and you made it to 18. And it's like, great, you graduated high school. And then it, it kind of dies off as time can go on for a lot of people. And <laughs> you know what, being able to validate people and make people, people feel good it, to, as we, it seems like as we get older, we don't do that as often. Mm -hmm. You know, we, as we get older, as we get older, um, you know, we get more busy, you know, life just happens. And so rem being able to remember to, you know, identify, did I, did I, you know, validate that person today? Did I validate at least one person in my life today? Um, I always try to do that, whether it's to Jared, who, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, being able to validate him, like, wow, you know, you do such a great job at your job. Like you, you know, you work really hard. Um, and so being able to, to validate people, being able for us, especially to just talk about our emotions mm -hmm. is just, so important you know we want we we want to feel accepted we want to feel loved um we want to feel happy um and like i said there's just such the, such a stigma um surrounding that you know people are labeled you know crazy or psychotic and that's just not it people are just struggling and it's it's a brain it's an issue with their brain um and i think that you know we would have a lot more people getting help if we were able to be more accepting of that and if we were able to learn about ourselves and be able to try and be willing to work on those emotions i mean we go to the doctor when we break our arm we go to the doctor when we have like you know have a cut on you know our knee or something like that you know we go to the doctor for those things but for some reason it's just frowned upon if something is wrong that you can't see mm -hmm. And so yeah. that's so that's really just the it's why that talking about emotions and being able to learn about them is just so important. Thank you so much today. I really like the please acronym. I wrote it down um, and I'm yeah. definitely going to look up the emotions wheel. And if I find a good picture, I'll post it for everyone to see. So, yeah, definitely. I'll have to, hey. I'll, if you don't find one, just let me know and I'll, I'll send one to you. Thank you. Thanks so much again for coming on and sharing with us about emotions and um, I really like the ending where we need to validate people. So I appreciate yeah. you and I love that you're willing to get on and talk to us all about it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Sure, no problem.